Actual TV. Hey there, everyone. Welcome into the Pulse on Technology here on thepulsenetwork.com. I am your host, Tyler Pyburn, and this is the show where we cover literally every type of technology from all the simple things that you use at home, all the way up to professional broadcasting. I mean, you name it, we're going to be covering it and talking about it here. And we've got a very interesting show with a very interesting guest for you lined up today. Ryan Salazar is going to be joining us in just a few moments, so sit tight. But before we get to that, of course, we have to hit the headlines. The Pulse Network. It's social TV. Now we're going in the field, and this week we've got a very interesting in the field because we're going to be talking about some of the cool announcements, some of the cool products that were released at the NAB show, the 2012 NAB show, just a few weeks ago. A lot of interesting things, a lot of very cool companies that are doing some very cool things, to say the least. Now, one of the people that we happen to meet at the NAB show, we actually talked to him leading up to the event. He had some very cool and interesting things to talk about ahead of time. Obviously, he's the guy that basically broke the story about Autodesk Smoke. We welcome into the show Ryan Salazar. You've seen his writings on ryansalazar.net. We've seen him on Broadcast Engineering and Creative Cow. You name it, the guy's everywhere. Ryan, welcome to the show. How you doing today, my friend? Hey, Tyler. How you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Have you, you recovered and recouped from NAB show? I know it's a long time out in Vegas, but <laughs> starting to breathe easy now, huh? Right. Well, actually, not really. I'm, I uh, lost my voice, so I'm still a little uh, scratchy from it, but uh, I'm getting over it. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. So let's talk about some of the uh, products in particular that were released. Obviously, you know, you were very, very busy at the show itself, running around like crazy. I know, obviously, there's going to be a lot of new articles, a lot of new posts that you're going to be coming out with very soon for a multitude of different uh, spots. So talk uh, about some of the different products. Let's start with uh, Blackmagic. They, I mean, Blackmagic had a lot of different announcements and a lot of different things that they were coming out with. Talk about their digital cinema camera because this was one of the things that everybody was buzzing about there. Right. Well, the uh, the, the Blackmagic digital cinema camera uh, is really interesting because it has uh, it, it, it the way that it everything looks like it's cinema, but yet it's digital film. I'm sorry, it's digital digital files. So it, it, it's a 13 stop, 12 bit files. So it creates these DNG files, uh, and by the time you're finished, it looks like it looks like film when it comes out. And it's a it's a digital camera. It's amazing. Um, the the other cool thing is that it does uh, solid state. So it's their SSD, um, and uh, it, it, it's got a uh, a built in slate generator basically. So you can go ahead and uh, create. You can type in the information for your slate, and it, it can incrementally add, you know, take one, take two, or shot one, shot two, like that. <laughs> <laughs> Filmmakers out there are absolutely just drooling over this. And the thing that I think is interesting about this that I thought was really cool was we heard everybody talk about, you know, the 5K camera of, uh, elsewhere. But this, still not too bad, 2.5K, 2.5K. I mean, this is awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's excellent. And um, the, 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 the price point is amazing, the fact that it comes with... Uh, uh, you know, it, it comes with the color correction tool and everything. It's 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 really uh, really amazing. I'm looking at it right now online. It, yeah, it's DaVinci Resolve 9.0 that comes with it. The, the DaVinci Resolve software alone, if, if what I remember correctly, is about 9.99 just for the software. So the fact that it comes with the camera, you're essentially paying you know two grand for the camera and you're getting the software you know with it. So it's 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 amazing. Yeah, it's like a bundle deal. The, the way it's working out is just awesome. It really is. So yeah. t tell me this. I mean, I'm going to ask actually ask you this. From my standpoint, who actually is going to be the person that uses this camera? Is it a person? Is it a company? In your mind, who do you uh, foresee people using this? I think you're going to see a lot of, uh, you know, prosumers use it as because it's it's such an affordable product. And and on top of it, you're going to see a lot of filmmakers use it. I've heard, I at the, at the show, I heard guys comparing it to the Red camera, and then I heard another guy say that it was better than a Red camera. I don't I don't know. I haven't actually compared them like that. A B comparison, but um, I'm hearing a lot of. Stuff. They're comparing it to a lot of different cameras, and and I just saw the other day. I believe it was on Creative Cow. Um, is the uh, Blackmagic Cinema Camera, digital cinema camera, uh, a, an HDSLR killer? Uh, it's possible. 
<laughs> wow. That's it. When, when you can have, hear comparisons to a, the, the Red Cam, I mean, we're talking two grand. That's just insane when you really actually think about that. that that's the thing that I can't uh, really fathom because the red one, oh, it's phenomenal quality. So, all right, let, let's move on. Let, let's talk about the next product that I, I was interested in because I was anxious to uh, hear your thoughts on this. And that's uh, Vid Checker because this thing is very cool because it does all the things that, well, you try to do on a daily basis. Adjust your audio, adjust your video, and so on and so forth. Tell me, give us some of the specs in the background of Vid Checker. Well, VidChecker um, was started by some of the guys that originally were, they were with uh, Tektronix and they did uh, Tektronix Serify. Um, I'm not sure exactly how, what happened, but they, they split off or whatever. Um, now these guys created a product called VidChecker. Uh, Serify is still around. It's its own independent product with a, a total, totally different company. Uh, but VidChecker is similar in many ways, uh, except the fact that it actually alters, when I say alter, I mean brings things within legal limits. So if you have a, a an MPEG-2 file that's going to DG Fast Channel uh, to go on the air and the uh, your, your color levels are too hot, it will actually bring the color levels down without physically compressing them. A lot of, a lot of legalizers back in the day, you know, before we had anything digital, um, would, would bring things within the limits, but it would just tear up the video. And this now uh, brings it within the legal limits and, and it's actually, you know, it looks good. <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, how many producers out there were just driving themselves crazy the last couple of years because we were saying, oh yeah, we can go ahead and do this, but guess what? We're going to ruin your video by compressing it to crap, basically. Right. Now we're right. going to keep it, keep it perfect. So go back to that question I had before. In your mind, who's using VidChecker? I mean, in my mind, honestly, you can really have almost anybody utilizing this. Well, sure. I, I run a, a, the technical aspects of a, a large post-production facility. We're getting it for sure. It's already slated on my budget. Um, it's, it's affordable too. You know, we're getting a loaded up solution. I believe it's about 7K, 6,500, something like that. Um, and for the amount of, uh, of volume that we send out, we're sending, you know, 2,000 two spots. Lots a month. It does radio. It does television. Uh, I can see a lot of television facilities using it for ingest of footage. I'm sorry, of spots coming into the facility as well as stuff just before it goes out and you know after it goes through their uh, media systems. And, and I mean, you talk about the amount of money. What I think is interesting about this, I mean, that, that's a great price because you really think about it. That's actually for corporations and companies. That's basically one person's job the entire time. So you're essentially taking away, you know, 45, 55, sometimes even more. The, the, the price range, this is going to help that out quite a bit. Right. It kind of, it's kind of your digital uh, virtual video engineer for as far <laughs> as uh, quality control. So <laughs> it's pretty but, amazing But stuff. don't worry, for the, for the digital engineers, don't worry. I'm not trying to get rid of your jobs. I apologize right. for that. <laughs> <laughs> I always have to make sure I throw that in there. All right, let, let's move on to uh, Zenmuse by uh, DJI Innovations. Now, it, what's cool about them is we talk about who's going to be utilizing their pro product. DJI, this basically, this product in particular, allows almost anyone to take some of the most incredible footage and incredible pictures from you know the air i just what i want to point out about this though ryan that i thought was absolutely incredible is you know it mounted to a you know a helicopter but what's cool about this is just how still the footage is and it's unmanned i mean that this is just blowing my mind just how smooth this footage is yeah it, it's amazing there there's stabilization hardware on the actual unit um, they will build these units to spec. So if you, for example, had a red camera, you'd have a, a little helicopter. Well, I don't know if it's called little, but it'd be about <laughs> the same of a, a small car. So like a Volkswagen Jetta, I believe. Um, but it was, it, was, it was really amazing stuff. I walked into the, uh, I believe it was in the South Hall at, at uh, NAB just a few weeks ago and saw this helicopter-like device and walked outside next to the hall. And sure enough, they're flying one outside. Amazing stuff. And... Um, Amazing. The guys from Turner were looking at it, Turner in Atlanta, uh, and right away they were talking about purchasing several. And you, you could picture, imagine, uh, by the way, it can fly four inches off the ground and be smooth. <laughs> so the, the cool thing is that, you know, imagine shooting like a, a golf course, uh, a, a golf tournament, and just kind of flying in from the very low and going, you know, high up and some sort of a pan shot or whatever. It's amazing stuff. Yeah, I, I honestly, Ryan, I mean, this morning itself, I was watching the news and, you know, as I was going through some of my notes, I was thinking, well, they're covering a fire out in western Massachusetts. This is something I'm like, all right, that's perfect right there. The other thing I have to point out about this is the weight of it all, though. I mean, what is it, like 160, 161 grams or something? Like, I mean, the weight is just it's, incredible. 
Right. Yeah. Very, very light stuff. And, and, and the cost isn't bad either. I think they go up the, the one that, that I'm showing in, in my particular article that I recently wrote. It's about 12K, but it's loaded up. Yeah. Top to bottom. I mean, that's not that right. bad of a price when you really think about it. Okay. No. The, the, the last thing that we have to talk about is obviously the piece that you broke ahead of time before the NAB show. Let's talk about Autodesk Smoke. You know, you and I talked back and forth actually leading up to the event. I talked with Mark Hamaker of Autodesk. He's one of the uh, product managers there. And let's be serious. You had all the information, all the data before anybody else did, before the NAB show actually hit. Talk uh, about uh, Smoke. Talk <laughs> about that price point again because, I mean, it's awesome. Yeah. Thirty-four ninety-five is is absolutely amazing for something that for a tool that was previously fifteen thousand dollars for Smoke on Mac, and I believe close to a hundred to two hundred, you know, on an actual the full hardware solution that they used to have, and the fact that it has batch capabilities. Uh, people are freaking out. They're really freaking out. I think it's going to, in a good way. I think um, it's going to. It is truly revolutionizing what's going to happen. the The landscape is going to completely change over the coming months. Uh, the uh, the beta program is is coming out in June. Um, they I had spoken to Mark, and they said that they expected about a, a thousand people to uh, to beta the software. Well, by the time Wednesday or Thursday hit at NAB, Mark said, "Hey, look, we're over three thousand now." So the publicity and the amount of people interested in this, the buzz, obviously, uh, it's working because they were at three and a half, three thousand, something like that, about a week and a half ago. I was going to say one of the things that I thought was interesting for my symbol was I was talking to Mark. He was like, "Okay, here's you know your free trial to test it out." He's like, "You better hurry though because I don't think we're going to be able to handle how many people are going to be testing this thing out," right. which was just right. so cool. So, have you had uh, the opportunity to really take a look at it and delve into it yet, or are you still waiting it yourself? Sure. No, I, I have seen the product. Um, I, I haven't physically played around with it, but I've I've sat there uh, for periods of time and actually watched it in action. It's pretty amazing stuff. The color correction capabilities are, are awesome. Tracking capabilities. Uh, it's great software. And and the fact, um, you know, I'm, I'm planning right now on, on slating out 20 for our facility and we are replacing Final Cut for it. Wow. Wow. That, so, you're not you know, hearing too many p people say that. I mean, five, four, three years ago. And now, I mean, th th that's what's happening. I think that's, you know, the, the industry is totally changing. I mean, from that standpoint, before I let you go, FCP, Final Cut, do they, gotta, uh, do they have to catch up or what? Um, I think it's too late for them. I really do. Um, they, uh, they upset me quite a bit when, when, the whole th when everything went down about last year, I believe. Um, Final Cut Server got nixed. We have Final Cut Server. We've got about a quarter of a million assets on that system. So for them to drop uh, a, a, a system like that just out of the blue overnight and, and change Final Cut um, really left a bad taste in my mouth. Uh, so I will not be returning to Apple. <laughs> <laughs> Except for hardware. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, as far as as far as other people, um, I didn't hear a lot of buzz about Final Cut yeah. at the show, and I think it, it has to do a lot with the whole thing. There, you know, there was a petition that was created. I was part of that as well. Um, there were about fifteen thousand people that signed the petition to bring back Studio Three. Hmm. Very interesting. Well, it's interesting to see with the, the release of obviously with Smoke and obviously seeing what uh, Adobe Premiere is putting together as well. So a lot of intricate things that are going on to kind of basically kill Final Cut. We'll see exactly how it plays out. Ryan, honestly, it's a pleasure as always. And I'm sure we'll be talking again very, very soon. And trust me, I got some pictures for you. I'll send them over to you. All right. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Tyler. Talk to you soon. Awesome. Great stuff. He is Ryan Salazar. You can find his working on ryansalazar.net, broadcast engineering, and also make sure you take a look and watch out for a new article coming your way in just a bit on Creative Cow. So for Ryan, I am Tyler Pyburn of the Pulse Network. This has been In the Field. We've got some tweetable takeaways coming your way.